The time has come for all of Norway to show the whole world how to party our way. It's the good house party, come and join us today. 'Cause we party all night and keep drinking all day. It is time for men to just let it go. Feel the rhythm of the music and never say no. If you ever feel like taking it slow, just listen to the music and let it explode. Hi there everyone, this is Derek from the D Film Studios and I'm here to show you how to create particles without any other plugins, just all built in in After Effects CS6. You will not need to buy anything else other than After Effects CS6 and you will be able to have particles. So I'm going to show you how to make the particles and how to make the intro that you just saw. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects CS6 and let's go ahead and look how this has been created. Right here, here we have the entire composition. The particles are moving, the logo becomes revealed, and then the logo spins out, and then it disappears. So let's go ahead and create a brand new composition, 1920 by 1080, that's good, and uh, 6 seconds should be more than enough. Let's go ahead and press Ctrl Y and uh, create the background first. Uh, let's go ahead and start out with that. So let's go ahead and call this BG. With the background, we're going to type in ramp into your effects and presets. Under generate, we're just going to click and drag. Here we have our ramp. I'm going to change it to a radial. I'm going to choose the start color to be a light, lighter purplish. And the end color, maybe something. That. I'll put the scatter and just going to put in do something like that. So there we go, there we have our background. Let's go ahead and create new solid once again and let's call this particles. 1920 by 1080. Alright. Right here, let's go ahead and type in particle and right there we are going to use CC particle world let's go ahead and click drag onto particles as you can see we have a pretty much like a grid heads up display kind of thing and if we were to render this out that's how it looked like it would have the grid and everything let's go ahead and get rid of all the grids and guidelines since we will not be since we will not be needing them let's go ahead and start out with the birth rate actually let's Alright, so that looks pretty bad, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and turn down the birth rate to about 0 0.8, maybe 0 0.6, and longevity, let's go ahead and increase it to about 2.6. So there we have that. Let's go ahead and go, go on to producer now. For radius X, radius Y, and radius Z, we're going to do 0 0.555, and I'm using uh, the tab key to uh, change it between these values. Alright, so now we have the particles covering the entire screen. Let's go ahead and now go under physics, change from explosive to twirl. There we have that. Change the vo velocity to 0 0.3. Uh, let's do 0 point, uh, 0 0.01. See that? It's got some very slight, very slight movement. It's going to turn the gravity down to zero. Resistance at zero. All right. So now, if we zoom in, we can go ahead and see them. See the particles. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Now let's go under particle. Particle type, let's go ahead and do lens convex. So there we go, there we see our particles. And birth size, I want to go ahead and turn this down to about 150. Yeah, that looks better. And death size about 160. It says variation, let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and do about 
I'd say about 70. Uh, yeah, let's do about 70. And this will just turn down to about 71. Alright, there we go. We are now done with the CC Particle World. So now let's go ahead and go and add a ramp. So type in ramp just like we did earlier with the background. And just click. Oh, click and drag. So I'm going to keep it a linear ramp and I'm going to put the top layer at like a tan color. Bottom I'm going to leave white and I'm just going to this point farther up. This point I'm just about there. So I'm going to increase the scatter a bit. And let's go ahead and make these more visible, make them pop out a little bit more. Let's go ahead and add a glow to it. Scroll down to stylize glow. And let's go ahead and just play around with this. Just a bit like that. So the threshold will be about 78.8%. Glow radius about 20 and glow intensity. About one. And I'm just going to leave that as it is. So now we have some very nice particles. So let's go ahead and actually make this a little bit nicer. Let's add some depth of field. So let's go ahead and press Control Alt Y. I'll create a new adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and rename this to DOF Depth of Field. And uh, let's go ahead go up here you may have the rectangle tool right here selected so just click and drag and go into the ellipse tool depth of field and let's just go ahead and create this ellipse tool let's go ahead control T and let's go ahead and make this fit a little bit better Just a tad smaller. Now we're going to want to invert it. And now we're going to type in camera. And we're going to add a camera lens blur. So now this is entirely up to you on how much you want to do it. I'm just going to do 10. So that'll just blur out right there. If we were to have a look, you can see that's. Not a very smooth transition from that right there. It's not too smooth, so let's go ahead and feather out the mask. I'm going to feather it out to about 250. There we go, it looks a lot nicer now. So there you go. We have the particles all done within After Effects CS6. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and stop here and uh, be on your way. But I'm also going to show you how I created the uh, logo and how it spins and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and create new shape layer. And again with the ellipse tool, we're just going to move in. Just hold down left shift and click and drag. Oh. There we go. So that looks good enough. Just gonna make it bigger, make it more of an oval shape. Gonna turn off depth of field for now just because it's a bit intensive on my PC. Alright, so let's go ahead and go ramp once again. In the show. Oh yes, fill. There we go. So now I'm just going to do darker reddish and a little bit like darker. Purple. 
purple half color. And I'm just going to go ahead and move that over there. Move that over there. There we go. And I'm also going to create a new text. Let's go ahead and type in right there. T I G G E R. Let's make that slightly bigger. What I'm using right now is uh, Universe 45 Light. Just italicized it. And right about there should be good. And if you were to press F4 or press right here, toggle switches out and nodes or down here. You have both of those selected, but yeah. Let's go ahead and do for the mode for this. Let's go ahead and match soft white. If you hold down left shift and the plus and equals key, you can sort through all the different blending modes. I actually quite like that one. That is called pin light. Um, let's see what other ones we have. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going through some ones that look fairly nice. Let's go ahead and multiply. I do hard light or linear. Linear light, that's what I'm going to go with. And uh, there we go. Let's just go ahead and click on shape layer one, hold down control, left click on your text, right click and pre compose. Let's go ahead and move all attributes and let's go ahead and make this be text. Let's go to toggle social zone modes again. Let's make it 3D. So I quickly just as you see that right here we have the particles appearing. If you want the particles to already have been appeared, all you do is just click and drag and then just extend this out. So now you've got already particles there. And I'm just going to go ahead and go into about right here, let's say, and click R on our pre comp and on orientation, the middle one right here. We're just gonna go ahead and put this onto 90, 90 degrees so you can't see it. And I'm going to go ahead and put a keyframe on that and go up a couple of frames and then set that to zero. That way we have it as we come in. Should do that and just easy ease it and just right click keyframe assistant easy ease or you could just press F9. So there we go. Then what I had is I went up to about here. I turned on Y rotation and then I went out to about there. Just did 10. So now we'll spend 10 times around. Well, it's still here, so it's going to put on to 90 degrees. So we'll spend 10 times around and 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and see. Spin this that way, spin this that way. There we go. Just go ahead and easy ease this too. Right there. And turn on motion blur and click this motion blur icon right here. There we go. So now we have it come in. It stays here for a little bit and then it spins out. And just like that. So let's go ahead and quickly press zero and see how it looks. And if we need to add in any other changes we will do so. Okay. 
Also, just to make it know, I will be including this project file um, in the downloads. In the description below, you'll find the download link. It will be on our website. So you can go ahead and check that out, download this project, uh, if you can learn from it, try to recreate it by not following this tutorial and just having a look at that, but let's go ahead and see how this looks. Comes in very nicely and then begins to spin. Yep, I like how that looks. Let's go ahead and just run out these last couple of frames. There we have it, I really do like how it looks, it slows down and then it disappears. I like how that looks. So let's go ahead and turn on depth of field now. So now we have that very nice depth of field look. And let's go ahead and click on comp1, file, and export, and to render queue. Let's go on to load. Alright, there we go. And I'm going to change it from H264 to QuickTime. Again, why is this being so slow? What else do I have? Nope, nothing really running. Really slow. What is going on? There we go. I'm going to go ahead and change this to QuickTime. Include project link. We're not going to be having any audio on this, so I'm just going to turn that off. And animation 100 RGB. So I'm press OK. Right here, best settings, best full. Yep. Let's go ahead and set this to the desktop. Let's do tutorial demo intro. And let's go ahead and render this out. I'll be back as soon as this gets finished rendering. Should take about a minute or so, so I'll be back then. Alright, well that took a little bit longer than I thought it would. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If this did help you at all, uh, please go ahead and tell me in the comments and uh, tell me what you guys want in the next tutorial. What should I show you guys how to do? Uh, so until next time, I've been Derek from the D Film Studios, and once again, here is our finished product.